Good evening, ladies Good evening. and gentlemen. This is Sriram here, and I welcome you to the 73rd TLR show. TLR shows are snippets of interviews that we conduct with senior leaders at TLR now, which brings to you the finest of leaders, entrepreneurs, and thought leadership executives. TLR Shows is an initiative by TLR Now. And uh, TLR Now itself is a niche mentoring, coaching, and uh, training entity based out of Pune in India. And we have presence in the Middle East and also in the US. At TLR Now, we have a very simple objective to enable transformation. And to enable this transformation, we tap into two important dimensions in individuals and leaders. The first is their passion, and the second is the purpose. Our clients love the work we do, and they look forward to collaborating with us on many an engagement. When I step back about a month back, about a month ago, let me go back a bit in time here, about a month back, uh, we were to have a very special guest on our show. And, and uh, obviously, I had butterflies in my stomach, having to have to get somebody of his stature to come and talk to us. And that went very well. And what do you do when you have a dish that you enjoy so much? The answer is simple. You go in for a second helping. And that's what we are doing today. We have Richard Reiki, the former CEO of KPMG India, and currently the non-executive board member KPMG Dubai, back on our show, talking about something extremely profound, something extremely important, and yet at the same time, not very tangible. Today, Richard is able to take his close to four decades of consulting experience. And he, when he guides mentors and coaches, young entrepreneurs to reach their potential, he is able to use this dimension of higher purpose very effectively. So we had a sidebar conversation after our first show when uh, Richard spoke to me and uh, Udayan Trivedi uh, about higher purpose. And that's when the whole thing got triggered off that, yes, Richard, we need you back on our show. And that is how here we are on the 73rd edition of TLR show with Richard again. Good evening, Richard. Wonderful to see you again. Welcome back. Good evening, Sri Ram, and uh, pleasure to be back. I enjoyed the show last time. I didn't even know how the time passed till you told me time is up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we did have a good time, uh, Richard, last time. And yes, yeah. I'm sure we're going to have a good time today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into the show, for uh, those who are familiar with the TLR show format, it is typically an interview that we do, a question and answer session that we do uh, for a duration of about 60 minutes. But today we have a slight variation in what we do. This is a very different experience that Richard is going to take us through. It's an intensely personal story peppered with tremendous amount of experiences and, of course, insights. So we would structure the show in a slightly different way. After the introductions are done, I would hand over the center stage to Richard, and he would speak about 15 to 20 minutes or probably longer on the experience that he has had with higher purpose. And I'm sure he continues to have. Post that session, we will get into a question and answer session based on what he has shared. And yes, as you listen to him, feel free to shoot your questions. I would surely take them up and I'm sure Richard would love to answer them. So that would be the format for the show today. So with that, uh, Richard, I would uh, leave the stage on to you. 
it's all yours uh thank you shriram and uh, good evening everybody those who are listening in and uh, i think uh, this is a topic which is very very close to my heart uh now you'll say okay when you started your career almost 38 years back so what was higher purpose did even people talk about it no nobody spoke about higher purpose then let me be clear but you know when um, about maybe 10 years back or 8 9 years back um, kpmg international at our global forum we decided to launch the higher purpose for the firm i was very fortunate to be in that team of selected partners a small team of selected partners who actually sat and worked on this initiative globally to put something together and then uh, that was to be rolled out across the firm so uh, when i reflect back and say what is this higher purpose and you know uh, what uh, what it means to me personally uh, and reflect back on my career and on my life uh, i believe i've lived my values the values on which i grew up on which uh, uh, i was uh, uh, which is which i hold very dear to me which is the bedrock and higher purpose is actually built on these values it's built on living these values uh, what better way to explain higher purpose than to say that uh, higher purpose is the capital account while your salary or job is your current account and those people who are into stock market investing will understand what capital means and what current means and you know the difference between the two and i think it's important and i would like to you know just give one quote which is uh, which struck me many times the uh, mark twain once said the two most important days in, in life are the day you were born and the day you discover the reason why and this whole higher purpose actually goes to that root to ask the question why why am i doing something if we look at each of our lives we all know what we do many of us know how we do it very few people know why we are doing it and the day you discover the why and you know now you'll ask me oh will there only be one higher purpose can there be more there could be any number i'm not getting i you know this is not a the process it is something which comes from your heart it comes from it comes from a very different being of a human being and most of us leaders most leaders lead with the head there are very few leaders who lead with the head and the heart and there are some leaders who only lead with the heart and there are few but the ones who lead with the head and the heart are a lethal combination if you ever find them preserve them keep them because they are the they are the ones who will grow the firm they will grow the organization and they will be caring and they will look after their employees very well and you know take them to their true level of potential my view is very simple higher purpose you know like many times people ask why do cars have brakes cars have brakes not because you can stop the car so that you can drive faster and higher purpose is that which actually helps you grow faster in life then you would if you didn't have a purpose if you didn't have something and i think it's it's a way that you move forward and uh, i thought there were one good way of explaining this would be to put, take a few examples and try to put it you take a football team and uh, uh, one of these football teams um, uh, i don't know the name of that football but i just uh, tell you what they said and what i read about it they said that we come together to save as many goals as we can now anybody who's a football fan will understand that nobody looks at the goal saver but they look at the guys who score the goal because they are the guys who are clapped applauded you know the messies and the uh, all these uh, great footballers pelés of the world and then you have this team which says our whole purpose is to save as many goals as possible now it doesn't need to get applauded but that is the purpose and that's how they are there to win matches by saving as many goals so this is one way of looking at life we look at doctors doctors work day and night on their jobs and what is their job their job is to give life and to celebrate life and that's what they do in 
you know, saving lives, as much lives as they can. And, uh, and there was one picture which I saw, which really enamored me, actually, which really touched me. And, you know, it sometimes make, brings emotions to you. There's this guy who's cleaning the outside facade of a building. And when he was interviewed, uh, somebody asked him, you come every day out here to clean these windows. Are you not scared? So he said, no, I have to do a job. I have to bring food for my family. But I also have to ensure that I go back in the evening. Now that's a very powerful statement that he's there because he has to bring food for his family. But he also has to ensure that at the end of the day, he needs to go back to his family. That means safe and sound and nothing happens to him. And I was reading the Navy SEALs ethos. Now, as we know, the Navy SEALs is um, in the US, the highest in, in their defense. And then one of the things they write is always, always ready to defend those who are unable to defend themselves again and again. Always there to defend those who cannot defend themselves and again and again. And the motto is, I will not fail. I will not fail. Now, these are people who are driven by a purpose higher than what human beings, you and me can go through. They are driven to achieve things uh, beyond. And you know, when somebody asks, when you take a Navy SEAL guy, what is the one thing you look for in that individual? Do you look for strength? Do you look for size? Do you look for, what do you look for in the individual? They said, we look for that individual who will help his comrade at the time of the crucial moment. And for them, you know, like somebody asked one of them that, why did you do this? He said, he would have done it for me. So the, the point is, you know, when you give your life up or you, uh, you know, you get injured because you're trying to save your colleague, I think that is something very important. And as we go down this whole purpose story, I think it's important to know some of the crux on which all this gets built. It is about doing the hard right thing and not the easy wrong thing. As we go through life, doing the hard right thing and not the easy wrong thing. Because it's very easy to go and get tempted and do things which, uh, you know, get us money, get us short term gains, get us. Uh, it is always easy to walk away from money and not uh, and still do the right thing. Have the moral compass in your hand because which tells you what is the right thing to do. And that's what should guide your life. And that is what has guided my life personally, where I've tried to live these values to the greatest extent possible in how I dealt with people, how I've dealt in the organizations. Second is to lead by example. How do you lead? You know, it's all good to put up your values and say, these are my values and talk about it on town halls. But people see you. People see you every day. Do you actually live those values? I mean, that's the question you need to ask yourself. And this is an introspection I want each of us to do as we are listening to this, because I think it's so powerful that when we can look in the mirror and say, yes, I live this. And then you need to care for the people. You need to care for the people who work with you, who are with you, whether they are your peers, whether they are juniors or whether they are seniors. You need to see how much of care are you going to put in it? How humble are you going to be? And how much, how much help can you give people to achieve their goals? You know, like today, all of us, when we get into life, we get opportunities. We get opportunities to grow. How many of us even look back and say, who are the people we have left behind? You got that opportunity to grow. You went up. Somebody sacrificed for you. Do you even look back and say, okay, how do I help this guy achieve it? I can only say one thing to you. And this is through personal example. I'm not trying to gloat. I'm not trying to say anything. But the day your titles are stripped of you, you'll know who the real you are your respect in society. So I say life is a circle. All the people you meet on the way up are the people you meet on the way down. Respect them on the way up. They will respect you on your way down. Everything that goes up comes down. Remember that nothing remains there forever. So, uh, so I think we need to learn to respect, to take care of people. Fame and fortune fades with time. However rich you may become, however famous you may become fades with time. But when you are in the service of human beings, you will be long remembered after you're gone. You will be long remembered after you're gone. And I think that is the impact each of us. You know, I used to earlier, uh, 
and my life has been the most unplanned life so i don't even want anybody to even go and follow what i did ever my life has been very difficult very different from everybody else and i think uh, it just happened i was lucky i was at the right place at the right time things happened and life moved on for me but i will just say one thing that we need to be we need to ensure that we are passionate about what we do whatever we do you must have passion and you should take it to the next level we need to influence and inspire people managers get work done leaders inspire and i think uh, it should it, i mean so influence and leader and uh, uh, inspiring people are the ways you need to go <clears throat> and remember one thing when you are sitting on that stage or when you reach a certain level in an organization people do what they see the juniors if they see success in a particular way that's what they will follow so if you as leaders in organizations are promoting the wrong people you can be rest assured that more demons are getting created in the organization because others are going to follow that they say okay this is a successful path so by promoting the wrong person we are actually doing more damage to the organization than good for the organization it's better to have that honest conversation and get it out of the way and we need you know as leaders i've always say we are orchestra masters we need to make that whole symphony work everybody needs to sing in unison the instruments need to play together because if you don't then you're a soloist and you know what happens i mean if you look at the two times india won the world cup it was the team that won and there was no one individual performance cricket world cup i'm talking of which actually stood out and said okay this is the guy we need because so i think it's all about the team it's about playing in unison about helping each other and as leaders we need to be catalyst of change you need to be that catalyst and not wait for the other person and uh, i always keep saying it at the end of when you hang up your boots from one particular career people are not going to ask you what's your bank balance or how many cars you have or how many homes you have or you know what's your bank balance they're just going to ask you one question in fact two questions number one how many leaders have you created in your lifetime and number two how many lives have you touched and i think this is the question that we should ask ourselves at whatever stage of life we may be even if you have moved off i am in my second innings now and i ask myself this question every time how am i doing how am i doing and i think that's the question we should keep asking ourselves how am i doing and i think if we don't get the right answer then we need to do something different and i think that's something important next question you should ask is why do you collaborate why do you connect with people you need to collaborate the world is living in a time and especially in the sports uh, post covid this is even valid before covid i would say was in a post covid period is all about alliances about collaboration of coming together about helping each other as we go through our lives so i think it's very important i thought another good way to explain this higher purpose to you is through uh, through uh, four stories and before i start these four stories i want to tell you one thing uh, there is this one runner i i don't remember whether you remember it uh, his name is uh, i think desmond redmond uh, redmond he was the person who ran the 400 meters race and uh, he had practiced very hard very very hard uh, to win that race and as the race started he got cramps in his legs just imagine at the wrong time you get the cramps and he fell but he was determined to finish that race from that this was 1992 barcelona 400 meters final and from the stand his father comes running out and he said son i'm going to help you finish this race the father puts the son's hand on his shoulders the organizers were very upset ki how can somebody come on the track and field you know who's not there but the father just pushed them off he told his son we will finish this race together nobody remembers who won that 400 meters race but everybody stood and clapped for this guy as he completed the race and his father was there so i'm just trying to say that there are times in life when these things have a deeper impact than who's the winner it's about your own way in which you want to leave uh, lead your life and when we look around and look for champions across all walks of life 
there were four stories that stood out for me and i'm going to give them in very brief i'm not going to go into too much detail you'll be wondering i'm only giving you stories the first one is a guy called karam beat singh karam beat singh kak he was the general manager of the taj mumbai during the terrorist attack and i'm just going to be make it very brief i'm not giving the whole emotions around it he was in that hotel with his family they were staying in the hotel in the top room his wife and two sons within a short time of the terrorist attack he lost his family they were killed he called up his mother and said i've lost my family is gone she tells him stay on and save as many lives as you can and that's what he did for two days knowing his family is dead in the upper room he was saving as many people what drove karam beat singh to do what he did what was that emotion that drove him to or what drove those chefs who took bullets on guests who they didn't even know on that day there was a harvard study carried out that there emerged 300 heroes from that show at taj of people who helped the guests during that time escape while some of them gave up their lives it is the greatest it has never been ever experienced in world history that so many heroes emerged from one event and that was one event martin luther king i mean the civil rights movement was he the only man who suffered the black movement was he the greatest orator of his time no but what made martin martin luther king what he became i think that's something that we need to ask ourselves or the right brothers when they first had the first uh, aircraft which flew into the uh, motorized aircraft which went and there were there was this guy called samuel langley who was funded by the government who had a much better script and a much better story to say but they did not have the purpose and the passion that the right brothers had right brothers had no funding but they were the first guys to fly the plane Samuel Langley the first time his plane crashed he gave up the mission and walked out despite being funded these guys were not funded they still went ahead and the last story i want to talk to you about is Jamshed G Tata the founder of the Tata group before Tata iron and steel was put up he died unfortunately 5 years before that but he wrote a mail to his son Dorab ji and he told him that when you put up this factory iron and steel factory this is what you need to consider and he put down all the policies that he wanted you know the way the workers are going to be paid the gratuity the bonus the medical the mosque the temple the church the medical facilities the schools make sure that there's good living conditions for the workers make sure the water sanitation is good here's a man who's a businessman is first thinking of his workers that defined tatas for what they became they put policies in 1800 and something when there was nothing known as you know accident insurance etc those are the kind of things that define a leader and make them what they are and i think that's what in my view is called higher purpose it was not known as higher purpose in those days but that is what is higher purpose because and if you look at jamshedpur the town which is named after jamshed and you know so he's the man who actually uh, got it going there and uh, and one other way when i look at higher purpose and say okay what is it you know i'm just trying to put this concept across to you because it's like shriram said it's not an easy concept to understand because everybody keeps asking what is this higher purpose that people keep talking about i'm coming back to what i said in the beginning that it's all about the what how and why and i think people most people know what is their purpose what is their cause and what is their belief but very few people know why the organization exist and that means a deep introspection of understanding because for me that is the glue that actually binds people to an organization that blinds customers to the organization that binds suppliers to the organization that binds the entire stakeholder community to an organization and i think so so higher purpose is just not a lofty word it is as real as you and me it is as real as businesses and it is something that is to be lived and i will give you very shortly what we did in kpmg and how we actually lived it uh, uh, just giving you one example of one last company my last example which i want to give Uh, is about apple what does apple do 
they also hire the same guys like every other computer company they also uh, uh, you know make the same computers they also hire the same consultants the same big four one of them will audit them the same consulting firms will give them advice or whatever that everybody else does then what made apple very different what drove apple to become the first trillion dollar valued company in the world even after steve jobs died many years ago and i will go in steve jobs own word because he laid the blueprint of an organization which was going to outlast him which was going to outlast him for many many years apple believes that people with passion can change the world for the better and those people that are crazy enough to think that they can are the ones who actually do and he said somewhere else i've come here to make a dent in the world and that's exactly what he did i mean there were uh, walkman before he came he brought the airport and we saw what happened phones were there he changed the entire industry he, he destroyed so many industries in the bargain the camera industry and you know uh, everything else along with it so it's just not a phone it was music phone everything on that and uh, even today uh, uh, he brought the ipad he brought i mean and now they want to build the car and so when this car comes i don't know what it's going to be but apple is never known to do something small and uh, so everybody who's waiting for that car will be waiting with a huge amount of expectation what apple can do so <clears throat> i think if we want to get higher purpose in an organization we must put our personal meaning to that higher purpose and now i will tell you what this this purpose means to somebody like me so when we launched the higher purpose in kpmg <clears throat> when it was launched globally and we put it in india uh, <clears throat> uh, normal thing which i did was i gave it uh, to a set of people basically the human resource department and said okay can we launch this a global initiative here's the templates here's everything come the entire marketing material internal marketing material everything is there just launch it <clears throat> for one month nothing happened no takers so then i said this is something i believe in why is it not happening why are people not believing it so i took it on myself and i ran the project personally and this was over and above my day job so when you are wanting to do something you can't say i'm going to stop now going to clients i'm going to stop meeting my people i'm going to stop running my company and i'm going to just launch higher purpose no it was part of my whatever evening or night or early morning job but i took it on myself and we changed the dynamics of how we going to do it first i must i said that we need to put we need to put the uh, uh, you know uh, what is my own higher purpose my personal higher purpose and my personal higher purpose was self uh, sorry organization before self for me and i've lived it so i can talk about it i had enough stories to tell where it didn't make a difference to me what happened to my personal career my firm came first whether it was a sacrifice in my career whether it was stepping back taking maybe two steps back sometimes three steps back sometimes taking huge comp cuts but in the interest of the organization which helped the organization i did it all the time it didn't matter to me and let me tell you and let me tell anybody who's thinking about it it didn't make a difference because i i was i was not a guy who was traditionally brought up in the big four for 13 years i worked in a small firm i worked in a medium sized firm and i came into the big four as an outsider and i remained an outsider let me tell you it's very easy very difficult to get accepted into the big four i remained an outsider till i stepped on as ceo of kpmg but i managed to convince people around ki yes i can lead you guys and i was voted in as the first uh, elected ceo of kpmg india and the partners voted you know it was uh, a vote and i think that gives you the this thing ki yes you have it in you to do something of that and then don't miss that opportunity when you get there and i only let, let me tell you you may laugh at it but you can please go ahead and laugh so the one thing i said <clears throat> after i stepped down after 5 years i want to leave this place happier than what i found it i'm not interested in any revenue targets 
I'm not interested in what goals we achieve or whatever. They were at the back of my mind. But I wanted to, my most, my most important thing was how do I make this a happier place where people can come and work and feel happy about working here and do whatever it takes. And we brought some dramatic policy changes. And let me tell you, I used to get calls from my competitors. Are you mad? You're doing all this. Next year, they followed us. So leaders actually lead by bringing some initiatives for the people which others will finally follow. They don't like it because obviously it's going to hit the, hit the PNL or whatever, but it will be there. And it is also not just bothering about your frontline soldiers, but what about the security guard? What about the office boy? What, what are you doing about them? So there was not a single soul that was not touched. The secretaries, the people who work for us, who, who actually put their night and day sacrifice uh, from their family time and you know are working with you. I think it is all about creating an organization where everybody is important. Because for me, if my back office worked, my front office was, was moving very fast. And last time when we spoke, Shiram, I told you, when we achieved our numbers, we were doubled in everything, whether it was a partner headcount, whether it was revenue, whether it was partner profit, everything was doubled. But that was not the aim. That was the outcome of what we were trying to do. We were trying to build an organization and that came as a fallout of it. It was not the purpose which we went with. And the purpose was to create a happy organization. And I think so when I went there and I put my own personal story and I encouraged the partners to say that you have, see like any other initiative like this, there will be uh, people who will criticize it, who will be cynics, who will you know say this is not to work. This is you know this is all too flossy stuff. It doesn't fit into my head. What you're trying to say, but you have to go ahead. You have to march along with people who will believe in what you're saying. And I got many partners to come and say we had fireside chats. We had people. I mean, the kind of stories we heard. I had tears in my eyes listening to some of them. Some of the employees actually shared such personal stories of their life on an open stage in front of everybody. I was like surprised they are sharing these stories, but it was the motivation which got them to do it, to come and share it and talk about it and get it off their chest. Felt much lighter as you got off that stage. And I think each person, I mean, it was, and then we created this whole wall of people's stories. The entire office was like a wall with all the pictures and everybody's higher purpose on it. It was something to be seen. Then we finally ended it by saying that if I get X number of stories, I'm going to give one day holiday to the whole firm, which we did. And um, uh, we also did the final higher purpose event in three cities. And uh, just to tell you the impact, somebody, you know, Shiram, you're going to ask all this, you know, so uh, I'm sure you will come and ask me, okay, you did all this, what did you achieve? So uh, I just want to tell you that uh, our attrition fell, but that's not so important for me. What is more important for me that even after, after leaving KPMG, this March will complete four years after KPMG India, when I meet people at airports or meet them at restaurants or wherever, they say the one, what they may not be in KPMG now. They say the one thing that we miss of the firm is the higher purpose. We can never, ever forget that event. I've got people write to me on LinkedIn talking about it. People who write to me personally, who send me WhatsApp messages, and they said they can never forget it. The impact something like this has actually transcends the person's life. And, you know, I can't really explain it to you. But I can only say that people who were there in that town halls walked away with a spring in their feet. They walked away with a spring in their feet that this is the organization that they want to work for. There was this one girl I remember after the town hall, uh, she came to me and she said, you know, I was thinking of uh, quitting the firm, but I changed my mind. And I think that is the impact that you have. And these are anecdotal, what I'm giving you, because everything life is about anecdotes. It's about telling those stories. It's about telling those real life experiences that you have. But I think the most important thing is how do you get people motivated to go and see the larger goal that you're putting forward? And I think it would be better to again say it uh, that it is, it is the glue which binds you to an organization. Higher purpose is that glue which binds you to an organization. It makes you do the absolute right thing. 
and it makes you live the values for which you stand, which all of us stand for. All of us are born and brought up in good families. You know, we have the opportunity of going through our values. I think we need to see how we live it. And as leaders, we need to demonstrate it through our own behavior and action and just not being on screensavers or in cafeterias pasted all over. So Shiram, I just thought this will be my uh, few words. I don't know, I think I've spoken for too long, but uh, yeah, you, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Richard. I mean, uh, not really. I think it was uh, fascinating. And uh, it's always uh, wonderful to hear a first person account uh, of uh, something so uh, vast and at the same time something so deep. And, and when you're reeling out those, uh, you know, uh, numbers in terms of reduced attrition or higher revenue target, et cetera, I mean, those, those were manifestations. But as you yeah. said, that was not the objective. The yeah. objective was, and to this day, I think it still remains uh, extremely profound, a happy organization, which is what I guess every leader aspires for. Sure. And and uh, and it's an ongoing thing. It's not like you know you have reached a state of happiness and then you have a stamp and then, but it's an ongoing uh, journey. I think it was uh, amazing to hear you talk about higher purpose itself. And uh, you know the, a very brief uh, overview of uh, what you did. So yes, I mean uh, based on what you said, I have taken down some notes. So there are a few questions uh, that I you know thought I would ask you. Yes, and by the way, yes, we had some amazing comments coming in uh, based on what you said. People liked the insights very much, especially the the fact that you spoke about Apple and uh, how the auto industry is in for a huge change, not from the traditional competition. Maybe they are facing their Apple days now when they have, you know, competition coming in from a very, very different dimension, right? So a lot of good uh, comments coming in. I'm sure the audience has uh, found it very insightful. So uh, Richard, if we can step back, you know, for, and look at this entire exercise that happened, what triggered it? Something like a something like you know finding the higher purpose uh, uh, is does do things like these uh, need to be done when you know the boat is kind of rocking or uh, is it okay even to you know kind of go ahead with it when uh, things are fine the organization is growing you're meeting your numbers what was the trigger for this especially such a especially an exercise of this scale that it had to be rolled out globally. So um, I will go back a few years uh, in KPMG's history. Uh, this was before I joined KP. I joined KPMG in 2004. In 2002, KPMG rolled out their global values, mm -hmm. the refined global values, or I would say the new values uh, uh, at that time. Uh, you know, when you go back, uh, Shiram, to the founders of an organization of this stature, because KPMG, unlike the other three, other three firms, the other three firms are based in America, have got their founding in America. KPMG's foundations are in Europe. So it's a very European-based firm. It's got German, Netherlands, UK, UK being the main, then Germany, Netherlands, uh, these being the major components of KPMG. And then, of course, US also. But US also, that's the way it is. So it's more mainly a European firm. And 2002, that time, Mike Craig was the global chairman and he thought these values would be a good way to bring the firm together. You see, when you have a firm with 155 countries, how do you get all the people aligned to something that is you know, common, a common kind of... So he used values at that time. Over a period of time, the values died out. Died out in the sense they were no more the core of what was happening. Yes, people lived the values and uh, uh, it's a very nice firm. Let me tell you, it's a great firm to work in and I have only pleasant memories of that place. Uh, and I still associated because I'm still with the KPMG Middle East practice. So in some ways, I'm still associated with the firm. But uh, and I can see the changes that are happening there. And uh, the higher purpose came at a time, not we were struggling. Shiram, we were not struggling. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to, uh, in today's term, let me use it, vaccinate the people. <laughs> I wouldn't have used this word before. 
but I will use it now because now this has become vaccination means, okay, you're safe, you're secure, you're great, you know. So we wanted to create a vaccination or an energy dose into the organization. And one point I would like to say in any organization, there are something called the energy givers and the energy takers. Mm -hmm. You would have experienced in your life, you know, as you went through your firm or the companies where you worked in, there are many people who are energy givers and there are many people who are energy takers. They just suck you, you know, completely. And, uh, you know, with their attitude and their negativism, and there are these energy givers who are always positive, wanting to do the right thing. So, uh, uh, so we wanted to bring, reinforce our values, which was the bedrock. And on top of that, we put this higher purpose out. And I will give you one story. Mm -hmm. This is a real story. <clears throat> I remember the name, which office, and who this person is. There is this young lady partner who, for the last one month, had not seen her family. She was on an audit. Going home late in the night, by the time she went, her kids are sleeping, husband is sleeping, early morning, getting up, going back to work. Very, very tough situation. And uh, uh, then what happens, she comes to this audit committee meeting and the client does not agree with her. She holds her own. She mm -hmm. holds her own and says, I'm not going to give in because this is the opinion of our firm and this is what we stand. She called up senior leadership at that time and said, I'm taking this stand. We may be asked to resign from the audit. She was told do the right thing. She was driving back that evening and uh, the car stopped at the red light and she said, let me quit this job because this is too much tension because I've broken my family. I got, uh, I got a tough time at the audit committee, you know, where people were literally not abusing, but you're literally giving you a real hard time. And, it's, and you know, when you go through it, I've gone through many of those meetings. Let me tell you, it can be quite humiliating. And uh, uh, so she went through that and said, I'm going to quit this job. Then she thought, my decision would have saved so many of the small investors who had put their life savings into that company. So did I achieve something by the stand I took? and the toughness I went through, and that made her take a decision she's not quitting. She thinks because I'm doing something right by society. That's the higher purpose. It's not about the money you will earn, not that you got an extra bonus, but it's about how you took the right decision, going against the grain, not succumbing to pressure, and still doing the right thing. And I think that's what, so when our organization rolled this out, they rolled it out to inject life into the organization, a large organization, bring it together, bring people together. And, you know, I'm very happy to say that India was one of the best rollouts in the KPMG global world. And we were complimented for it. Uh, I even had people from Harvard Business School actually reach out to me and ask me, what did you guys do differently at the firm? So, uh, so I think that the, the point is that we led it our way because we wanted to touch as many people. And I didn't go by the common template that was laid out because as I told you, it failed. It didn't actually energize anybody, but I wanted to do it because you know, this higher purpose is something very much to do with your heart and soul. Right. If your heart and soul is there, actually it is the soul of an organization. You want to ask me, higher purpose is the soul of the organization. And I think the moment you get this soul right, everything else falls in place. Let me tell you, I've been through enough tough times. I've been through enough, uh, you know, challenges in my life. I've gone through innumerable failures, which we discussed last time. But, we, you know, it is this which keeps you alive. I always keep saying, never, ever sell your soul. You can sell everything else you want, but never sell your soul. And as long as you can keep your head on your shoulders and operate in a particular way, I think you can go there. So our organization did it to bring it together. It was a great rollout. It was done in some practices. Let me tell you, it didn't happen the way it was expected to happen because each firm did it. I mean, we are a federation of firms, right? 155 countries, we can see 155 practices. Some countries did it better than the others. I think in India, we 
all of us partners who were committed to it actually did a, it did a good job and i really appreciate and i want to say thank you to all of them who supported me on this uh, journey of making this so successful and also you know uh, just to share with you shriram the kind of speakers that we got at our town halls i cannot forget one individual i want to name out here a guy called major dp singh he is a guy who's an amputee he was a kargil hero he had lost his leg in kargil and uh, um, uh, and he's a he's a marathon runner by the way uh, i can't run a marathon even when i was a few years younger but he ran a marathon and i just give he came there and he spoke at all our three town halls the standing ovation that he got and the fans that he built up i mean it was an amazing story in fact one girl she came to me and she told me she said my mother just had a knee uh, replacement done and i told her mama why are you doing this you're not walking why aren't you walking here's this guy without one leg running a marathon till next day her mother was out and walking so the impact that individuals can have and this guy had a had a serious impact on our on the youngsters people who believed who liked his story what he put so the town hall was something that had a very very deep impact and we are blue color by the way kpmg is the blue so it was it was like a sea of blue that one could see this you know people sitting there all together interesting interesting uh, richard i think uh, I, can still, i can still feel it actually yeah yeah i i can sense that you know as you speak and and you know the 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 tone uh, the tonality in your voice it clearly demonstrates that uh again uh, richard if i step back uh, you you narrated these incidents that uh, were extremely profound and kind of you know very moving for people you also spoke about head and heart initially you spoke about passion influence inspiration etc so it 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 all boils down i believe to a very very personal moving experience this entire journey of finding your purpose or finding the higher purpose now another point that you touched upon is in any organization or in any ecosystem there are people who drain out your energy and i'm sure there would have been those naysayers who would have said okay fine we have vision we have values we have uh, you know a, a vision statement they are plastered all over the place if we have not lived it for so long what's going to happen or is one of those hr initiatives some would have said uh, they would have may probably had a uh, sense of deja vu also and uh, we've seen this happen you uh, know it doesn't work etc etc i'm sure you would have built uh, you would have met with a lot of uh, uh, i would probably resistance probably even indifference so how did you as you know the leadership team you personally and the senior partners uh, how did you kind of uh, work around this because at the end of the day the, the uh, these guys also need to be bought into the fold and uh, not through a you know directive or not through cajoling they they had to see it uh, you know to feel it and kind of embrace it so how do you think leaders need to react to such a situation where uh, you know there will be naysayers and they need to get everybody on board uh, you can't get everybody on board let me be honest <clears throat> Uh, right. and uh, if somebody says he can get everybody on board then either he's lying to himself or he's living in a cuckoo land sorry to use that word uh, so i think uh, you will have to live with the fact i look at it very simply shriram if you can get 80 80% of the people across the line i think it's a great job done okay and so i worked on the partner group i worked on them i i personally uh, uh, spoke to some of them i did it through our meetings at the partner so we actually first got them to understand what higher purpose is and for them to go and spread it to everybody out there i am a kind of leader who walks the corridor mm -hmm. who does not sit in a room who is the person who will go to even the office boy and speak to him so i was never a elusive leader who you don't see you know many times the ceo you never meet him you don't know who he is maybe you see his picture somewhere and uh, uh, so uh, so but i actually was uh, i walk with this i work with people because i believe that if uh, 
whatever little bit I have knowledge, I mean, each of us have a limited knowledge, what we can share it with people and our share our experiences and take it forward, I think. And humility is very important for a leader. Humility is very important. You must keep yourself grounded because, you know, I'm not saying don't enjoy the perks of that position, but know that it is temporary and it's going to go away one day. As long as you enjoy it and knowing that you don't want to have it after some time, Fine, enjoy it. But don't think after this is going to remain. You know, if somebody is today, uh, you know, you're getting a special check-in done at the hotel or at the airport and you know, they're giving you your boarding pass, it's not going to happen after you go. You will have to go and stand in that line and go through exactly what everybody else is going through. But while it's there, okay, you got that, you can, you know, whatever. So uh, uh, don't get attached to things. So uh, for me, it was about getting my leaders aligned, my partners in this case aligned, and then also to work with the director group because we have partners, then we have directors, and work with the director group and get them also aligned. And uh, uh, if it is left to me, after you gone to the junior most guy and told him, okay, come on, you all, we'll all get aligned. But you know, it's a large organization, twelve thousand people. You know, it's not easy to reach twelve thousand people, and uh, so you reach whoever you can and uh, you know, meet them and uh, uh, I can only say something like this that uh, uh, we, the higher purpose event did have a huge impact on the fund. It did have a huge impact and it did help from the financials which was not the purpose for me but it did help on the financials. It empowered the employees more. They heard these stories because it was not about me. I must have had a 10 minute show or a 15 minutes, whatever. But every or so many partners, so many employees, junior employees, secretaries came and spoke on the stage and told their story. So it was not linked, only partners will come and speak, only this person will come and speak. We just we saw which were the best stories. There was a team which analyzed and said, okay, you guys go and tell your story on the stage. So that inspired people because they saw themselves in that image. They saw themselves in that young girl. They saw themselves in that secretary. They saw themselves in that one partner who told about how he brought up a child, his child who was not, who was differently abled and how much he. So all these were linked to his leadership style. What he learned in bringing up a disabled, a dis differently abled child and how it made him a better leader, a better human being, and, you know, and how, so it is, it's okay, you know, it's okay to have and, you know, to be part of that and you can still do well in life and, you know, uh, succeed. So, uh, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. You should never be ashamed of your past. I always say you should be proud of your past and excited about the future. And I think that's what we try to bring in, empower people, make them feel more important, make them feel, you know, just imagine a person sitting in the Ahmedabad office only working with say 200 people there, suddenly comes into the sea at Bombay with 4,000 people sitting in one stadium. Just imagine the power to that one person who's only seen maximum 100 people or 150 people or 200 people is now seeing 4,000 people of KPMG at one place. The power it gives them, ki I'm part of this larger organization. And I think uh, that's what, uh, you know, got people going there. So I, I think it, it helped people to reach where they reached. It helped people to actually question themselves. Right, right. And, and uh, 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 Richard, one of the points that you uh, spoke about was uh, obviously enabling people, you know, creating these uh, avenues, opportunities for people to come up and share their experiences, share their stories, and kind of, you know, connect themselves with the uh, the larger and probably the truer purpose of the organization. Yes. Right. So that itself, if you see, is a huge change exercise. Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, when we, uh, you know, uh, uh, based on what little I have, uh, you know, seen and experienced in any change management uh, exercise in organizations, there is a tremendous amount of investment that needs to be done in, uh, you know, uh, equipping people with skills to be able to actually manifest that change. Yeah. I mean, yes, you have a higher purpose. Yes, you may be able to, comp uh, you know, uh, commit resources to it, monetary or otherwise. You could have policies being redesigned and, you know, you could go the whole nine yards or probably the eight yards. But the ninth yard is that, you know, the, uh, you know, People need to be actually empowered to do that. 
which requires a lot of you know uh, relearning unlearning etc so how did you approach that and and you know what did you focus on uh, as skills in people for them to go and percolate this down further so that uh, you know they're able to get their teams up believing yeah, yeah. so uh, this all has been led from the front right mm -hmm. so we use this higher purpose as the tool through which we looked at every proposal we made mm -hmm. does it pass the higher purpose test you know when it comes to client acceptance when it comes to you know what kind of proposal we are putting in does it have that value because actually you lift the standards of the firm it is uh, uh, what i wanted to achieve fully i could not achieve let me be honest because i thought i would take the standards of the firm right up there and make it a premium firm could not happen maybe it takes many more years it maybe it takes 10 15 years to get back there but what we did was we brought a lot of training and retooling of employees to be able to get them to think differently to look at it and let me tell you many of those trainings i personally led some of them at least uh because for me uh, i like to be in touch with youngsters uh, uh, i uh, uh, like to talk to them i like to understand from them i take i do reverse mentoring what you call i learn from them and uh, 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 what we can do better in the organization so it is not only teaching them but also learning things that we can do better in the firm so uh, yeah, uh, so i think uh, it was a two way street actually but we did do we did invest a lot of money in it at least in the learning part uh, you know development is always a question mark in most organizations and i'm very disappointed as to where we are as a country on it but uh, and myself i'm holding it because i was a leader what was i doing but uh, but i think the much more effort has been made on the development part of it but on the learning part i think we did a lot yeah yeah i think uh, that's heartening to hear richard because Uh, as i said uh, that's one thing that's kind of uh, <clears throat> overlooked consciously or uh, subconsciously it gets overlooked and then you expect you know some pixie dust and you know things will automatically turn out for the better uh, so i just give you one example shiran sure. just prove sure, sure. point and not to uh, and not to say that this guy just talking in through his hat so we got harvard business school the best trainer for professional services firm to come down to india at a very premium price mm -hmm. and train uh, 60 of our partners on uh, for 5 days uh, uh, three professors from harvard come down for 5 days you know what it costs right sure. so uh, 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 and this we did year on year so we got 60 60 60 60 partners getting trained uh, on how we can work differently how we through case studies and through uh, and we also invited our middle east firms to come and participate in it if they wanted and they did send many of their partners here and they were really very happy with the quality of the trainings that happened there so we brought many such interventions we brought the director school where we worked with some professors from singapore and you know and uh, when i was the ceo i used to personally go to all these schools uh, and also in this harvard business school let me tell you i was put in the dock so after doing this training the they would call me there and they would throw questions saying now they now your partners have questions for you as to what are you doing with your work so and i was not shy of taking on any question so if i didn't have the answer i didn't have it but uh, but it was a great experience actually It, it was a great so so we did a lot of interventions with different business schools with different trainers from different parts of the world who came and trained our people so we did invest a lot of money i would say and not only at partners at director level then we did a lot of uh, things in coaching personal coaching mm -hmm. of senior managers directors were personally coached to become partners and what what it means what it needs to become so that could be a bit of the development part we looked after but we could have done much more on that i think sure sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 uh so richard taking forward from what you said uh there's the you obviously had the entire leadership team come to it there were uh, there, there was investments in terms of time money effort learning and and learning a uh, learning and development obviously you had the entire uh, framework in place and as you were executing it 
you also knew that it's going to be a, a exercise that is not going to kind of you know translate into results quickly is going to take time it's like sowing a seed you need to nurture it and you know water it and let it allow to blossom so there is always this dichotomy or dilemma of being caught between you know having a dashboard where are the metrics what has happened what has not happened why are people not you know kind of coming up the curve so you have this uh, what i call the dashboarding on one side and then the entire concept of nurturing on the other side it's a tough balance because at the end of the day you're committing in dollars over there and somebody at the top is going to ask you all oh, this is nice but what's the brass tacks i mean where is this going to lead so how did you manage that you know i'm sure there have been challenging situations even there when you kind of you know when you started uh, you know signing up those checks or approving those invoices so so how did you ma maintain that balance between you know uh, this dashboarding and running behind metrics and uh, you know that excel sheet saying okay so much has been done versus letting it kind of imbibe and you know kind of seep in through the organization as a culture so uh, what i'm going to say now for all my listeners please do not follow this <laughs> this is my personal style i am a person who plays by the gut shriram i play by the gut sure when i believe in something i just i bat for it i go for it and honestly i did not have a dashboard okay i was i was actually uh, uh, quite badly mauled at my excom india mm -hmm. leadership team that I, are you why why are you doing this why are you investing so much money of the firm this is our money you know it's a partnership firm after all right sure sure so why are you doing this many times you know the ceo's job is a very very lonely job very lonely there is nobody you can talk to the only person you can talk to is yourself and um, uh, so i spoke to myself and i said are these guys saying the right thing should we just cut off this program it's too much money um, and uh, will we be able to make the profits what they are expecting etc and will we get the returns and uh, i uh, i didn't uh, uh, i didn't work for the returns honestly never in my life have i worked for returns on it because the way i believe it as long as you're doing the right thing everything follows success everything follows the right thing and okay maybe i was lucky like i said i have for me my career i've been at the right place at the right time i got those opportunities when i get them i grab them but i will not leave an opportunity because i am so passionate about something and i was so passionate about this higher purpose because i truly said this is me now you say that oh you are living your personal dream and getting everybody to believe in it no it is everybody's personal dream all of them i wanted to awaken that giant within them each of us have a giant within us how do we awaken that that superman or the superwoman within us mm -hmm. and take it to the next level to achieve the best version of ourselves mm -hmm. how do we get people to become the best of what they can become how do we help people push the envelope so they reach that level where they can actually reach many times people don't reach it they have much more talent but the talent doesn't really get tested and honestly this higher purpose tested my talent because i took the decision on my own many times as the leader finally it's an executive call and i took that executive call with all the consequences that would come with it exactly what you said that you know the board questioning you or the Uh, we had an oversight committee they questioning you on it fortunately for me uh, uh, my oversight committee uh, was very very supportive of what i did and uh, they applauded me in fact within the kpmg network we were recognized as one of the best firms that actually launched this higher purpose and also the impact that it had it has an impact on the brand actually and uh, so Uh, had the opportunity to do some interviews uh, on it and spoke about it the only sad part i found about all this that it was a very internal initiative i wish the firm had taken it out externally it would have been much better because the client should have heard about it you know uh, and all that which we could have very well done but they said no we want to keep it within our employees we need to get our employees first done 
so i think uh, uh, you know other some other firms who came after us were all on twitter and linkedin and talking about how kpmg didn't do it actually mm -hmm. so uh, so uh, i thought that we could have done better that's my view it's my personal view in the 23 board members international board members and just one of them so <laughs> you one of 23 so you your voice doesn't count sure sure yeah, I think, uh, uh, again, if I go back to what you said, uh, Richard, it's about how strongly you believed in it. Yeah. And and yeah. as long as, you know, you were clear that it had to be done and uh, you were seeing tangible benefits. And I'm sure that was visible even to the uh, people at the higher levels. And, and yeah. uh, no wonder you had you know, the support of the oversight committee. And uh, yes, uh, that and um, what Yes, no dashboard. That's something I'll keep in mind. <laughs> I said, don't follow me. Don't follow me. Uh, I'm an unorthodox leader uh, who follows very different ways of working. Uh, I try to make it up through my hard work and through my, uh, you know, try, try to move it and motivating people. For me, I was very lucky to have a fantastic team to work with. Uh, who really worked so hard to get us where we got. And let me tell you, we did all this. Mm -hmm. We still had partner comps increasing. We had partner headcount increasing, doubling, I'm saying. In three and a half years, everything doubled, Chira. Our turnover doubled, our headcount of partners doubled, and our partner earnings almost doubled to what they were earning before. So we changed the whole landscape where we were. That, that's that's a very different paradigm, uh, Richard. When you step back and see, and and I can see the you know the, the the sheer impact it has had on people, plus the fact that I think it was such a intense experience. I mean, yeah. when you narrated about those incidents where people who have moved out, if you meet them today, they still yeah. remember, recollect, and recall, yeah. and talk to you vocally about it. Yeah. I think it's it's a huge thing that has happened for them. And I think what, uh, if I can again reiterate what you said, what, what stayed with me, and, and believe me, a lot of stayed. But one thing that really, uh, you know, what you said, it's not about your purpose. It's not about what Richard wanted that has to be the purpose. It is each individual finding their higher purpose in the entire context of, you know, their role in the organization. I think that's I a very big one. Sure. I just give a small example. Just mm -hmm. two days back, I was at Noida with one um, uh, owner of a chartered accountant firm. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And I was he came down to see me off in the car. And as I was getting the car, this one girl, she was coming into the office. And she came and said, hi, Richard, how are you? And obviously, I didn't recognize her. And she said, you know, I used to work in KPMG. And so this guy, who's the owner of that firm, said, do you know him? She said, how, who doesn't know him? And uh, uh, she said, you know, he's the guy under whose leadership the higher purpose was launched in KPMG. So she must have been a junior girl at that time or whatever. She introduced herself. She told her name and she said which department she worked in. You know, so the, the, the point is people still remember it maybe six, seven years after it was done. Because uh, uh, it was done, I think, in, I don't remember the exact year, but maybe 15 or whatever it was done, 14 or 15. And uh, 2014, and we are now 21. We are seven years away, and people still remember it. So I'm just giving uh, these anecdotes. So I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but they're intensely personal, uh, Richard. I mean, yeah. it's, it's had an impact on them. And I think the beauty is somewhere uh, they probably would have taken this and and uh, percolated in their own organizations, wherever they are working now, in whatever form. So I think something so profound, if it gets cascaded across, I think that is another huge success that, you know, uh, I would see of the entire uh, initiative. So also yeah. once, uh, Shiram, just to share with you, once we were at the global board in Phoenix, we had a global board meeting, which was happening at Phoenix in the U.S., Mm -hmm. And we had invited one of the top, one of the tallest IT leaders. I won't name him because I mean, he may not like it. Uh, 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 who we invited to be a, a keynote speaker to the board to come and speak to the board. And uh, I saw him walk in, and uh, suddenly saw these higher purpose boards because we had just launched our higher purpose at that time. And fortunately, my board was also there. You know, my higher purpose. A few people who had given their boards were there. And when he walked in to speak. He said, is Richard in the room? 
and uh, so I stood up. I said, "Yeah, I'm here." He said, "I really like your higher purpose." You know, so uh, it, it a complete outsider who just walks in to speak at a KPMG board meeting and then he sees he must have read five, six of them, or he read only mine. I don't know. But he read a few and then came and said, I really liked your higher purpose. So the point is, uh, I think the, 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 it, it has to come from the heart. Sure. And I'm saying it against to everybody. It cannot be a tick in the box. If it's a tick in the box, if it's a process, forget it. Don't do it. Uh, because then you will not be able to reach the depth. It's a very, it's a very deep moving experience, honestly. And it has to come. It, it, it comes from the heart. It makes a lot of difference. Sure. Sure, Richard. Sure. So, Richard, I guess uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, we are about uh, 70 minutes into the conversation, something similar to what we did last time. So, sure. I just have, uh, I guess we have time for a couple of questions. And uh, so, the first one among them is uh, when you look back at the entire experience, you know, and uh, if you had a chance to do it all over again, what would you have done differently from how it was executed previously? Something that you know you learned from experience, and uh, you know probably you would have maybe moved the pieces in a slightly different way. What would that have been? Okay, <laughs> so when I was running the firm, um, I was very very aggressive personally, very uh, to get things done. Maybe I would have been a little less aggressive. And uh, you know, uh, uh, try to uh, uh, get it, uh, uh, get more people on board than who I got. Uh, number one, number two, I would definitely externalize it. Okay. Because I'll tell you why, and I'm just going to give you one uh, example to prove the point. Uh, uh, possibly we are the only firm in India which actually went on BBC with an ad on KPMG. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed mm -hmm. to do it. In India, mm -hmm. so I went with the ad, and I was told the institute would go after you, etc. But the ad was very innoxious. There was nothing about so you know, like uh, clients who saw it, they came and said, "You uh, the ad BBC aired this ad for six months, and uh, you never spoke about you know your services or what. You just spoke about your values and what you stood for. And not only me, I got other leaders also. It was a one-minute ad actually." And uh, uh, spoke about the firm and spoke about what we talk about our people, about, you know, whatever. And it had such a huge impact on them. So I just thought if it externalized the higher purpose, we could add a huge impact on our clients. Who would have, in fact, you won't believe it. One day I was at the, I was got off a plane and I was walking down in Delhi Airport. As you know, you walk on those travel letters for a long time. And there was a CEO of a very large company who was there. And I said, you know, I must compliment you uh, on uh, uh, on uh, <clears throat> on the way you run your company and the ethics that you follow. I really am impressed with it, and I'm hearing good things about you. So he told me, he said, you know, once I listen to you uh, speak at somewhere on higher purpose, that's my higher purpose. He said. So the the point is, we externalized it. We could have got this message across to many more of our clients than what we did. So those are all personal anecdotes where you went and spoke at some conference or a TED talk or whatever on higher purpose, but um, but it was not, uh, you know, uh, it could have been externalized more, I, I would say. And uh, and I would have done one thing which I got scared of doing, honestly. Uh, when I first envisaged, I was envisaging this as one event where we get the whole firm at one place and do it. But I got scared because there were girls and other things. I didn't. I didn't want to see the repercussions of what could have happened. You know, could have happened. I'm just saying, if we got everybody, and there were not enough planes to fly people down to one particular location, so we had to use trains and you know all those. So I said, no, I'm not taking the risk. And so we did it in three locations. Maybe I would have attempted to do it in one location because the impact would have been like mind blowing. Taken sure. a stadium. Yeah. If you ask yeah. me, these are. Because the impact, many times it's not uh, content is also important, but also how you put it across. Put it across. Important. Sure, sure, Richard. Sure. Yeah, and and uh, the last question, Richard, as we you know come to the uh, end of the show. Uh, obviously, this is a uh, experience. The entire uh, journey uh, <clears throat> had a lot of impact on the firm, 
it had a lot of impact on people it had a lot of impact on the financials the metrics whichever way you look at them and and uh, you actually had a happier organization so while all these things are there what did the entire thing mean to richard reiki as an individual how did you know this entire exercise sort of uh, change you were you able to revisit something that you uh, thought was uh, right and and then you uh, you kind of uh, took a detour from that or did it reinforce some of your beliefs how was it for you as an individual it reinforced one very great belief and which is still there honestly my belief in the human being mm -hmm. it believe it reinforces one thing that if you motivate a person and you inspire people they can go much beyond their call of duty mm -hmm. and i was pleasantly surprised of how people came up and you know uh, i'll just give one small example there was this girl in hr so uh, 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 she was uh, uh, in charge of one of those events and uh, uh, for at one city and it was late in the night it was around 12 o'clock in the night and just got off the plane i was going to my hotel and i told her you know it's late you want me to drop you you know i am home because it's late she said no no i'm going to the site i'm going to the event and when i got up in the morning at some 4:30 in the morning, I get a message on my mobile. Everything is set and ready. That was the commitment. Nobody had to tell her that she has to go at 12 o'clock in the night to that site. It just showed how self-driven people got, and it just reinforced my belief in human beings that they are. There will be people who will do wrong. There will be people who will do what they will do. but i think the basic fabric of a human being is uh, is is good and it actually made me that so uh, it also changed me a lot because it uh, made me uh, actually connected me to this more than what it was when i started it mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it made me uh, i would say become a better human being mm -hmm. myself better Uh, more uh, this thing, and also uh, that continues. Mm -hmm. That is not stopped. I mean that uh, what I learned there continues in my life even today, and and I I feel happy about it. I think I'm 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 a happier person if you would say personally a happier person, more fulfilled, more mm -hmm. fulfilled uh, because. You see, all this money you earn, bonuses you earn—they're all short term. They go away. You don't even see it, right? I mean, it goes into some bank account from there. God knows where it goes. So, and but, however, what you leave to yourself or the impact you have on people is very, very different. It made me a. It made me a better and better giver, giving back to society. Uh, through what learnings and so uh that day i decided that now if once i finish up here i must go to do something where i give back i don't want i don't want anything more i want to give back now through what my experiences are and that actually got me there and today i was i'm fortunate today you are talking to me on higher purpose number of people have spoken to me so i got this opportunity to speak about it right sure. and maybe some people will take one or two points from here and they will go because every interaction you take one or two points right and you say okay i will take it and see what i can do with it uh, so that is what my happiness is that through this i'm able to touch a few lives whatever you know wherever Though we all have this big grandiose plan, I want to impact so many lives. I want to do it on a mass scale and all that, which has not happened. I'm still working on it. I'm hoping one day you provide me that platform where I can do it at a mass scale. But uh, absolutely, uh, yeah. But that's something that I really want to uh, see because I'll tell you what people keep talking of knowledge transfer, knowledge management. This is the best knowledge transfer you can do when you get leaders who have completed their innings. to come and give back to future leaders all their learnings just through sessions like what you are doing is fantastic i think because you people are picking up tidbits of information and becoming better leaders themselves yes yes yes
thanks uh, richard i'm sure uh, we would love to again you know get you back and uh, we, we we would love to be part of the journey which helps in this uh, tremendous process that uh, you know you have set forth and and it works i mean the best thing is it works it's tested it's delivered and and uh, we have the guy who's done it at the helm so we would love that opportunity and yes as you said giving back is something uh, extremely powerful and and it really taps into a person's uh, higher purpose and more importantly the real purpose yeah so yeah. so it it's it's been uh, it's been an absolutely they learned the new word real purpose now i'll remember this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah thanks richard i think it's been a wonderful uh, you know one hour 20 23 minutes of discussion that we had thank you so much again uh, you know for uh, taking time out and coming i i know you're on a business trip but you still managed to find time our audience uh, thank you for listening in and i'm sure uh, you guys would have uh, as i said last time there's so much that's written here right and and i'm sure you would have also filled up your uh, notebooks you would have also run out of pens which lack ink now and those are good signs believe me you thanks again for uh, listening in uh, we will continue to bring these shows to you on a regular basis do connect with us on linkedin facebook youtube twitter and instagram do follow our pages on the social media uh, uh, social media platforms Uh, to keep abreast of you know what is it that we are bringing forth uh, in the future if you want to connect with us do write into us at reach at tlrnow.com that's r e a c h reach at tlrnow.com thanks again for your comments and uh, have a wonderful wonderful evening all the very best to you stay safe stay secure and yes let's all work towards our higher purpose the real purpose so that at the end of the day we are able to be a happier human being thanks so much richard again all thank the you. very best thank you thank, thank you, you. So all much. the best to everybody thank you thank you thank, thank you so much